So in this uh, video, we're going to talk about some of the ECAS systems that we have out there, electronically controlled air suspension, and hopefully uh, help with some of the questions and concerns that we have out there. So when we hear ECAS, uh, most of us think Meritor, uh, Meritor Wapco, with, uh, with the system that they've ran in the past, and also the system that Schneider has ran in the past. Um, again, it's not specific to Meritor. Uh, we use the ECAS term across several of the electronically controlled air suspensions. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Hadley valve, uh, Hadley smart valve, and the calibration of the Hadley smart, smart valve using diagnostic link. So we do have to be a diagnostic link 8.14 for the, uh, the calibration tab to, uh, to be available to the user. Um, some more confusion that we have on this is a few of the Schneider test trucks um, are running the uh, aerodynamic ride height, which means the ride height can change based off the cruise control. Um, you would use the same procedure to adjust those trucks. Uh, if that does become standard spec with Schneider, we will adjust the work instructions and the video to, uh, to match the spec. But for the sake of this video, we are speaking only to the Hadley Smart Valve, which is spec on all of the P4 Cascadia intermodal units. Uh, to further clear up some, uh, some confusion out there, if you look at the Hadley material, uh, troubleshooting guides, their manual. It has you use a separate software through Hadley with a USB cable that plugs directly into the Hadley smart valve. If it was an aftermarket install or something installed by our PDI center or custom truck crew, custom truck center, uh, that would be the case. But with the intermodal units, uh, the Hadley smart valve is a factory option. So we would not use those instructions. We, or I'm sorry, those calibration instructions. We would use diagnostic link. So hopefully that clarifies some of the confusion that's out there. Um, we will have this video embedded into a Word doc with some uh, with some work instructions. But just for reference, uh, when we call out the blocks to uh, to place between the frame rail and the axle, uh, the three inch block is the standard block when requested, and the two inch is for the arrow. So three inch is the standard block, two inch is for the arrow. If you look at this in DTNA work instructions, it calls it out in millimeter. So we went ahead and converted that, made it easy. Three inch standard, two inch arrow. So as you can see in my screen, we are in diagnostic link. I am at diagnostic link 8.14. We will go up to actions. And we are going to go to aerodynamic height control calibration. Aerodynamic height control calibration. So once we select this, uh, we see we've got a couple panels here to view. It shows you the front block location, uh, rear block location. Again, we would use this same screen or tab for the dynamic ride height trucks and also the Hadley Smart Valve trucks. If you have a dynamic ride height valve truck and you have issues with the suspension adjustment, I would recommend that you reach out to the tech team or the training team for further instructions on that as there's only a handful of trucks, uh, five or less, in the Schneider fleet with those. So as you can see here, uh, before you start, we have some check boxes that we have to, uh, we have to select. Confirm that you have viewed the how to place gauge blocks photos. Confirm that you have a full set of calibration blocks called out in the workshop manual. And also confirm that no one is working on or near the truck. So we do want to be safety minded when we look at this. Uh, the air suspension can raise and lower on its own. So be very mindful of that when you are placing the, uh, the suspension blocks, adjustment blocks between the uh, bottom of the frame rail and the axle. The truck will raise and lower on its own. Be very cautious of those pinch points and safety. So we have selected all three of our um, check boxes here. Uh, the engine does have to be running. As you can see, we have our engine speed. We do have to be good on our air pressure, uh, parking brake status, uh, rear axle status is stationary. You will see the SNA or signal not available. That is the front axle status. That is for the units with the dynamic ride height. So on this particular truck with the Hadley, 
we do not have an additional Hadley on the steer axle for that. So again, goes back to some of that confusion when we hear dynamic ride height and Hadley. So hopefully that, that clarifies that. So we are in the cab of the truck uh, filming this, obviously, and we have a technician that we're going to have to communicate with with sign language to get the blocks put in. So right now we have got all three of our blocks. We've got all three of our blocks uh, checked here before you start, and we will select start calibration. So we do get a pop up here for calibration procedure will cause truck suspension to raise and lower. Make sure to stand clear of the truck when clicking on the next button. So we select OK here. Calibration procedure will cause the truck suspension to raise and lower. Make sure to stand clear of the truck when clicking on the next button. Click next to begin. So right now we are raising the truck to maximum height and then automatically drop a quarter of an inch. Click next to raise the truck. So we see our rear status uh, goes to raising. Truck is currently raising. Please wait until front and rear axle status is stationary. We will see our raising tab go to stationary and then we will populate for next. So this test does take a take a second here. Now we're lowering. All right, so right now we will place the standard height to gauge blocks between frame rail and axle. So our technician is actually putting those in right now. All right, so we have our standard height to gauge blocks between the frame rail and the axle. Once the blocks are in place, click next. So we had a little blurb there where it went down. So I'll click next. Truck is lowering. Please wait until the front and rear axle status is stationary. All right, so right now, we will remove the standard height to gauge blocks, place the arrow blocks between the frame rail and the axle. And once this has been done, we will select next. Technician is changing those right now. All technician has those changed. We will select next. As you can see, we're back to lowering. All right, remove arrow uh, height to gauge blocks. Technician is removing those. And as we little lag there between moving them and the next button, select next now, so this is the point where if this was the uh, dynamic rod height we would do the uh, we would do the same calibration on the steer axle uh, for this uh, purpose of this video we are only doing the Hadley and we will click next And we are done.
So right now you have a suspension raise lower switch in the dash. Um, obviously I can't show you a photo of that through the laptop screen, but once this is complete and we click close, I recommend that you do shut the truck off and disconnect the, uh, disconnect the lap laptop and communication device from the nine pin, completely disconnected uh, with the key off, uh, let it power down five, 10 seconds turn the key back on and then using the switch in the uh, in the dash uh, make sure that the suspension raises and lowers properly thank you